Hi, this is Luke Bowman. Welcome to my video for Fogville by Corey Wong. This is a track of his new album, A Motivational Music for the Syncopated Soul, which came out a few weeks ago. I love this track. I heard it a few times on his live albums, and it's great that we now have a studio version for it. It's a fantastic double stop workout, some cool funky riffs uh, and lead lines in here. As with my previous videos, I will take you through section by section and quickly show you how I'm playing it. Transcription will appear below. Also, if you go down below, you can get a link to the PDF. If you like it, please give it a like and share. Um, please check out my other videos. Also check out my Facebook page and Instagram. Okay, so we'll zoom in and we'll get cracking with it. Okay, so we'll start with section one. The key of the song is E, E major, and the first four bars go like this. Let's break that down bar by bar. So the first bar here, if we think of an E major chord, up here, we're taking the top two notes, which is the G sharp, ninth fret B string, and the B on the seventh fret E string. What he's doing here is hammering on, barring with your first finger at the seventh fret, and then hammering on the third finger on the ninth fret of the B string. Not sure it's exactly how I've written it down. I think he's, he's actually playing it slightly before the beat. So if you do it three times, and then seventh fret bar with your first finger, and then ninth fret D string, eighth fret G string, eleventh fret D string, ninth fret G string. She's implying a B major to a C sharp minor. So. And then the second bar, he's got a little riff going on there. Not sure if he's hitting the bottom E string or if it's a, a muted note. Okay, so ninth fret D string, 11th fret D string, and then the double stop, ninth fret of the D and the G, 11th fret. G. And then ninth fret on the G and B string. And here he's sliding up to the 13th fret and the 12th fret from the 11th and the 10th. And back to the 9th. So that whole lick there. Okay, next section. Applying an F, minor, F sharp minor chord, hammering on from the ninth fret on the G and the B strings to the eleventh and the tenth fret with a bit of a scratch. So that second part there, you can either bar it or play it with two fingers. Eleventh fret on the D and the G, and then ninth fret. So that bar, and then he's ending it with another lick. So a lot of these licks are kind of based on the E major pentatonic. So this one, 9th fret, 11th fret A string, 9th fret, 11th fret D string. 9th fret G string, and then he's bending up first on the 11th fret and releasing it. So it's kind of a finishing on the 9th fret. Okay, next bar, repeat of the first bar. And this time he finishes this bar with a lick. Which is 12th fret on the B and the E string, sliding up to the 14th fret and back down, and then 11th fret G string, 12th fret B string, sliding up two frets again and back down, so up to the 13th and 14th frets. So that's the first part. So then he's going back up to the 13th and the 14th fret and sliding that up into the next bar all the way up to the 16th and 17th frets on the G and B. So that lick. And 
and he's picking out. This is implying a C major seven chord. It's the octave. So. Better if you do the slides with your second and third fingers. And then you can put your first finger on and it all rings out. Or should do. So then up to the 19th fret on the G and B strings. And down to the 14th and the 15th fret. So this is applying D major. Okay, that's the first eight bars. So the next two bars are the same as the first two bars. The next part goes like this. Again, a lot of double stops. Playing this is over an F sharp to a B chord. So we're starting here at the 11th fret, taken from the F sharp chord. 11th fret G and B string. And then 13th fret B string, 12th fret B string. And then moving them up, one fret, and then the fret again. So, which again is the F sharp chord or is taken from the F sharp chord. And then 14th fret on the B and the E. Again, top two notes of that F sharp chord. Back to the 15th and the 14th fret. To the 16th fret on the G and the B. I'm borrowing a lot of these because it's a lot easier than trying to put, you put both fingers on it. <laughs> okay, so that is the B major chord. The octave. And then he's moving that down. Kind of implying a B9 chord. So that whole section. And then another little lick. This time we're over a G major chord to a C sharp minor chord. Um, we're kind of using that E major pentatonic shape, which is also your C minor pentatonic shape. So it goes. fret on the D string, 9th fret on the G, 12th fret on the B, and then again bending it up and then releasing it so you're not picking it until you release it. 9th fret, 11th fret, and then bending that up and hitting the 12th fret on the E string. And releasing it down to the 9th fret. at the end of the lick there, the 9th fret on the G and the B, 11th and 10th on the G and B, back to the 9th fret. So that whole lick. And continuing that. So 11th, 9th fret, G string to 11th. Again, Bending it up before you hit it and releasing it. Back to the 9th fret, 11th fret, 9th fret, 11th fret, 9th fret and 11th, and then because at this point we've moved to a B major chord. Ready for the chorus section. Okay, so now we're moving to what I like to think of as the chorus section, which is driven by a keyboard melody with some funky rhythms from Corey below it. So he's pretty much vamping on an E chord and a C-sharp minor. The way he's playing the E, or the way I've transcribed it, is, I think it'd be bar chord here for E, 9th fret G and D strings, and then I've put in brackets the 7th fret here. When you see him playing it live, I think he's probably be playing a bit more of the chords. The actual recorded version, I think it's just those two strings, but you can play either or, or mix it up a bit. And then for the C sharp minor, he's actually playing it like this. Or these two notes. So ninth fret still on the E string, that doesn't change, but now the sixth fret on the D string, with your first finger, and then you can put the third finger on the ninth fret of the bottom E. So it's basically the first, the fifth, and the minor third, the, 
the C sharp minor. You can use this finger to mute if you want to strum it. Mute the A string. Okay, so they're the two chords he's using. The rhythm goes something like this. Okay, so what he's doing here, so starting with eight notes, chord, scratch, chord, scratch, and then moving to kind of a 16th note feel. So uh, chord, rest, chord, rest, two scratches, and then he's moving to the C sharp on the very last 16th note of the bar to give it that kind of funky feel, so. Almost like pushing it. And then, Same rhythm for the C sharp minor, just holding that down for the first beat of the bar, and then an eighth note, chord, scratch, and then back to the E. It's probably best to actually play along with him and you get the kind of feel for it, because it's you can read the transcription and try and do it that way, but it's very much you need to feel how he's playing it. Um, not saying I can do it, but I'm sure you can if you try it. So it does that three times. E to the C sharp, to the E, to the C sharp, to the E, to the C sharp, and then we'll go into a C and then D. But the way he's playing that, he's kind of doing octaves. So he's doing the major third of the C, which is the E note on your seventh fret A string, and ninth fret G string. And you can also put the bass C note in there if you want, and mute the D string with your third finger. Sliding it up two frets for the D. So rhythm wise, and that's the chorus section. After that, he kind of repeats what you might call the verse all the way through. Uh, there's a few slight variations you can get from the transcription, but it's pretty much the same until we get to the G sharp to the F to the C sharp minor. So after the after that section. He is then sliding up to the G sharp up here and playing it quite a rapid fire to the C sharp here on the 18th fret. So that's if you think of your C sharp major, bar chord here on the D, G and B strings, 6th, 5th and 4th fret. Just starting down there and he slides it all the way up 12 frets to the 18th, 17th and 16th fret. playing 16th notes there, actually doing it. If you do it down near the bridge you get that kind of sound. And then to the C sharp minor, 12 frets at the 18th fret. So and then down here, still the C sharp minor, 9th fret. And then we're going to an F sharp minor, he's sliding up. Playing that five times, just eighth notes. One of my favourite chords, I love this eleventh chord. The way I always think to play it, that if you think of an A major, but you're putting the, the B. So it's a B eleven chord. Resolving it down to the B and then a rest. So that section there, standing up, back into the chorus section that we've already done. Okay, so after the chorus section, we have quite an interesting part where Corey is picking out some arpeggio lines. So if we look at the chords, I've written the chords above it, we're going E to A minor, to F sharp, to B minor, G sharp seven, to C sharp minor, to F sharp, to B eleven. But 
he's picking out the arpeggios high up here. So the first part. Starting with an E major arpeggio. 16th fret, 12th fret on your high E string. 12th fret on your B string. 13th fret on your G string. 14th fret D string. 14th fret A string. 12th fret A string. 11th fret A string, which is then taking us into the A minor. So this part, if you think of an E major chord up here, it's kind of picking that out. Adding a couple of notes in. Taking us into the A minor. Which is A here, 12th fret A string. 15th fret A string. 14th fret D string. 14th fret G string, 13th fret B string, 12th fret E string, and then 17th fret E string. So that part. The next part is exactly the same, but two frets up. It's the F sharp major to the B minor, instead of the E major to the A major. So. Eighteenth fret, fourteenth fret on your E string, fourteenth fret B string, fifteenth on your G, sixteenth on your D and A, down to the fourteenth and the thirteenth, and then to the B minor arpeggio, fourteenth, seventeenth, sixteenth, sixteenth, fifteenth, fourteenth, nineteenth fret. So these aren't particularly easy to play. If you've ever done this kind of arpeggio, especially sweep picking. You might know these shapes already. If not, it's a case of learning the shapes um, and learning how to pick them cleanly. So the uh, I would tend to do it alternate picking, starting down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. But do whatever works for you. Um, but you need to make it sound nice and clean and staccato, the way Corey's doing on the, on the record. So the next part, we go into the C-sharp minor chord. So 18th fret, slight, slight change in the rhythm here, it's not all 16th notes, but it's mostly 16th notes. So 18th fret twice, 17th fret on your B string, and then a little triplet feel, 16th note triplet feel, so you can hammer it on, pull it off, 16, 17, 16, back to the 18th fret. So. And then back to the 16th fret on your B, 18th G, 18th D, 19th on your A, 18th on your A, 16th on your A, 16th on your E string. Now this does get difficult because the frets are getting closer together here, so to play this kind of thing without your fingers falling over themselves or off the end of the fretboard, it takes a bit of work. Then the last part of this lick, or this series of licks, and running up an F sharp dominant seven arpeggio. So starting here on the 14th fret on your bottom E string, 13th fret, 16th fret on your A string, 14th fret, the dominant seventh, on your D string, 16th fret, and then he's throwing in a few little chromatics from the blue scale. Notice the rhythm as this of this as well, that's 16th fret there, that F sharp is an eighth note. 13th, 14th, 15th on your G. That 15th is also an eighth note, so you're holding it a bit longer. Then 14th, 15th, 16th on your B. 14th, 16th, 14th on your top B. And you're finishing up on this B. I believe he's bending it up. So slowly. chord, which is the B11 we had before, and he's just jamming on this for a few bars. And then we end, we finish with this lick in B7. Now I've written it down this way, I'm not exactly sure of the timing of it, it seems like a free time kind of thing where he slows down, a, a rallentando, I think it's called. 
that's what the RAL is on the transcription. When you see him play it live, he slows it down even more. So the first part. Going on the B7. Starting here on the 7th fret on your bottom E string, 11th fret. And I'm using my 2nd finger on the 9th fret of your A and then sliding that up to the 14th fret. Which is just a B major arpeggio. 13th fret, D string. 16th fret, D string. 14th fret, dominant 7 again. 16th on your G. 16th on your B. And then finishing up on the 14th fret. And the next bit is the bit he slows down. So again, it's the B dominant 7th arpeggio that he's outlining. Starting on the dominant 7th, 17th fret. Which is your A up on the E string. 14th fret on the E string. The other thing I'd say is that he is kind of swinging it. So when I say swinging it, he's Instead of playing it, he's definitely putting a swing kind of feel to it. 17th, 14th, 16th, 14th on your B, 16th, 14th on your G, 16th, 13 on your D string. So that whole thing. Again, it's just a case of getting the fingerings and the pickings correct. So then the drums come back in and we go through the verse part again. To run through that verse all the way through until we get to the F sharp to the B. At that point, he's then going back to some of the arpeggios that we did earlier. So the G sharp seven. To the C sharp minor. the F sharp 7, and bending up to that B, and then again, back to the B11 for two bars, and then back into the chorus. So then we're going through a series of chords at the end part, where he's keeping the top B and E strings ringing all the way through. It sounds really cool. You might have seen this in quite a... You might have seen this in some Russian Dream Theatre songs, but he's starting on the E major chord. Moving up to what I think of as F sharp minor, but with the top two strings. Now he's playing it, I'm not very good at this, he's playing it with his thumb, which I can't really do very well. I struggle to get my hand round. So I actually tend to play it like this, which is very awkward. So it's a chord I struggle with. it up, two frets, oh. then to the A chord, so then moving to E, if you were to think of that, but with the B on the bottom, up to like a C sharp minor, Finishing with C. And finishing on the D. And that is the end of the song. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something and got something from the video. If so, please like and subscribe to my channel so you can keep an eye out for future videos. Also have a look at the ones I've done previously if you haven't already seen them. Thanks very much. I'll see you soon.